They gave us the word Kairos. That Kairos. Quick word. We are not in for favor. We are not in for favor. When a principle of God is applied, and whatever you do not expect, you will never experience it. Yes. 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 Number four. Number five. Yes. There are some people that God will never bless. Until they submit and they certainly Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Your friend here, Apostle Dr. Livingston of the Stay Harvest International Church. I'm so delighted to come to your house, come to your office for this uh, wonderful uh, broadcast. And I believe you've been ready, waiting. And I want to promise you today, it is going to be wonderful because the presence of God is too uh, much in this place. Remember, we do our services here every Sunday. And uh, we bless the name of the Lord that you've been following us all this season. Uh, fellowshipping with us, we thank God for you. Harvest International Church is uh, um, a place that God has chosen to raise a generation of that operates in a financial freedom and also that believes in the freedom and the deliverance of the woman is seed. We are located at uh, Reza, uh, but we still be doing our uh, fellowships in town, in town at the Tobani Center. Uh, when is this, uh, fellowships will remain in this in the state center, and our Sunday service and services and all the other activities will be done at our new premises, the place that God has given us. Where we have constructed a very wonderful church. You got to get there and see what God has been doing in this season. So we thank God. So when the church resume, when the services resume, uh, Sunday services and other activities will be at Reza, and uh, our fellowship, our Wednesday fellowship will still be in town as usual in the name of Jesus. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, as we get into your word, bless your children, bless everybody that is listening to us. Let this be an answer to many questions of people answer their question is through this wonderful message let the spirit of god take over let the anointing flow let the sick be healed and let the poor hear the good news of the kingdom we shall bounce all the glory to you in the name of jesus the son of the living god amen remember uh we have many people following us from all over the world. The people following us from China, following us from Tanzania, where we have uh, many branches. People are following us from Kenya. We have many sons and daughters. People are following us from Botswana, where we have churches. Uh, South Africa, in Zimbabwe, uh, Malawi. People are following us from Australia. People are following us from Latin America. And people are following us from the United States of America, people are following us from Canada, and people, uh, my daughters in uh, Switzerland, uh, my daughters in Iceland, my daughters in Sweden, my, my sons and daughters in Europe. Uh, may God extremely bless you. Thank you for following this wonderful uh, program. Now, there are numbers right on your screen. Their numbers right on your screen. And uh, City Harvest International Church, we have a prayer force which is operating 24 7. 24 7, the lines are open. The Lord told us to pray for people in this season. He told us, pray for my people. And so 24 7, the lines are open and the numbers are right on your screen. 
but also there is a WhatsApp number. There is a WhatsApp number that you got to send only a message. On that WhatsApp number, send just a message. Do not call, just send a message. And I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to reply to you. You, you are in any country of the world, just send a message through that WhatsApp and we're going to minister to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Also, there is our West Facebook page and also our YouTube channel. Everything is right on your screen. So get connected, get connected. When you call or when you send a message, you have connected with the grace that is operating right here. And uh, just a step you take to call, that is faith enough for you to receive your miracle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. I believe you sit right there with your family. I always tell you that dress up, dress up very well, put in your put on your suit, put put on a very wonderful garment, a wonderful dress, and sit there with your family, start praying and worshiping, and then uh, I come in with the word of God. And this, your service is going to be so victorious and so precious. Now let us get into the word of God in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. And uh, we're looking at verse number 18 through 23. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 18 through uh, 23. Bible says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present age or this present time this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. This is very significant in here. I consider, it starts by, but what of that? For I consider that the suffering of this present time, this present age, this present life are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us and for us and conferred on us. This is so good. This simply means you be dressed with glory. The glory will be inside of you. The glory will be for you. And the glory will wrap you up. So wherever you go, you'll be glorious. Verse number 19. For even the whole creation, all, all nature, waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's Son is to be made known. Whites for the revealing and the disclosing of their sonship. Verse number 20 says, For the creation was subject on, subjected to frailty, to fertility, condemned to frustration, not because of some intentional fault on its part but by the will of him who so subjected it yet with the hope when one says the nature the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. Look at verse number 22. We know that the whole creation 
of irrational creatures has been mourning together in the pains of labor until now. Do you know why they are mourning and do you know why they are crying? Is because they are subjected under corruption and they are not in the rightful hearts. And they are groaning and they are saying, we were created for the glory of God, but we are in the wrong hearts. Watch this. And not under the creation, but we ourselves too, who have and uh, enjoy the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, of foretaste of the blissful things to come, groan inwardly as we wait for the redemption of our bodies from sensuality and the grave which will reveal our adoption, our manifestation as God's sons. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is leading me to speak about uh, economical justice and economical judgment. You'll find out that each time God brings economical justice and economical judgment, it is a time where there was famine or hunger or a drought or a financial scarcity or a financial crisis, financial setbacks, financial frustrations, financial disability, financial bombardment, and financial failures. So each time there is a financial famine or a financial crisis, then just understand that two things are happening. Number one, God is bringing economical justice to his children and is bringing economical judgment to the evil people or to the evil ones. Now, in the Bible, it happened seven times. But before I get in there, because I want you to understand, and then I'm going to pray for you. I want you to understand something very important, and then I'm going to pray for you. Watch this. It is so terrible, frustrating, disappointing, painful for the children of God to suffer while the wicked are enjoying. It is not the plan of God. It is not in the divine agenda for God's people. The reason why Jesus came, he came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When we talk about abundance, we are talking about abundance of everything. We're talking about the peace. We're talking about the righteousness. We're talking about the joy. We're talking about the protection. We're talking about the money. We're talking about the prosperity. We are talking about the healing, the health. We are talking about the wisdom. We are talking about total, uh, ab you know, abundance in everything, in every. Thing. And that is why John 2, two he prays, uh, Second John 2, he prays and he say, How oh, I pray that you be well, it be well with you, uh, physically, spiritually, and also as your soul prospers. Because what we call the full gospel is when we are good or we are blessed in all the areas of life. And so it is so bad or it's so disappointing when the sons, when the princes are walking on foot and the slaves are riding on donkeys. The man of God saw it in the Bible that I saw the princes walking on foot and the slaves riding on horses. So it simply means that now the slaves had taken the place of the possession or the portion of the sons. And that is what is happening right now. The other day I was so, when I was in Dubai, 
uh, I felt so uh, painful. In fact, tears came out of my eyes when one of uh, uh, our daughters from here, Uganda, that I met in Dubai, she told me, do you know what, Pastor? Uh, sometimes you see us coming here in Dubai and you think we're coming for business, but some, some come here to sell themselves. And I said, uh, uh, and she told me that sometimes uh, they go extra. They go extra. Then I asked her, what is extra? <laughs> what is extra in prostitution? <laughs> and she said, this is when you do abnormal things like having an, uh, uh, sexual intercourse with a dog. Oh my God, I felt tears coming out of my eyes. You know, that uh, you, the, somebody will bring a dog and they give you $600. Uh, 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 and then you, you, you have an affair with the dog and then you get the money uh, and uh, you come back, you, you, you do something, you know. With that money, I felt so bad, I felt tears. And I said, no, 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 no. God must bring economical justice. Why should somebody sell herself to survive? You know, there must be justice. God must remember Africa. God must bless Africa. Africa is a blessed land, is, is the richest Continent, when it comes to minerals, when it comes to the resources right from the ground, Africa is the richest. But why is it people are poor and struggling and suffering? And I remember the other day also, some years back, I was in Malaysia and it made me so, uh, 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 I felt so bad, I was so, it was so painful when uh, uh, I met daughters, young girls from here, taken there in the name of scholarship and work, and then their passports are taken from them, and then they are selling them as prostitutes, selling them as pro prostitutes. You know, a young, young lady from Rwanda, she was about 16 years, 15 to 16 years old, is that she was tall, she, she cried tears before me and said, Pastor, help us. And that is why uh, we had to connect with the embassy and the police and arrest those people and help them come back to Uganda. You know, another one, she was a lady from Mali. She was working with MTN here and she was taken there in the name of getting a job. And what happened, they slaughtered her, removed you know, remove the, the, the heart. They remove the heart. They found some, somebody uh, dead there without the, the part of the heart. You know, I, it was so terrible in Malaysia. I met this lady personally, and she told me, Pastor, we're here, we are struggling, we don't know how we can get out of here. And before we succeeded to bring all the others, they had slaughtered her and removed the, the heart. You know, but do you know why all this is happening? Is because of poverty. It's because of poverty. You find somebody that, 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 that is loving God, grew up in church, loving God, you know, praying, seeking the face of the Lord, but you have no nothing. You have no nothing. And it is your right, it is your justice to prosper. Whatever is written in the Bible is for you. It's your promise. Whatever is written in your Bible, it is your right. You got to demand it. And so financially or economically, there is what we call economical justice. God must give you justice financially. You got to earn according to your work, even more than your work. But you're working hard and you're earning little. You're working so hard, you're going, doing business, expecting profit, and you're getting losses. Or people are stealing from you. Or people are lying to you. You're a young, beautiful lady with a good heart, and some guys are just coming in there to, uh, to use you and abuse you and then uh, misuse you and dump you. You're a young man. That is full of potential. But you don't have a job. 
You just struggling to survive. You, you did law. You have all the papers. A lot of money was spent on you. But you can't get a job. You're just walking around the city. You have walked until you're tired of, of applying for jobs. I got good news for you. I got good news for you. And I'm going to pray for you. And God is going to do something in your life. I want you just join me and feel that kind of uh, spiritual anger and say, no, 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 no. Enough is enough. You can't continue like that. That is not how you're supposed to be. You've been working in the city for many years. And the guy, other guys just came in and they are doing very well. And for you, you've been here 20 years and you have known nothing. You've been working in that company for many years and you have known nothing. God must bring economical justice and economical judgment. Let me show you seven of them when the Lord brought the economical justice and judgment. The first one happened to Abraham in Genesis chapter number 12. Uh, when you go through uh, Genesis chapter number 13 from verse number 1 to verse number 5 there, you find that in chapter number 12, Abraham goes to Egypt because of hunger. There was famine in the land. And so he goes to Egypt. He was even forced to lie <laughs> that Salah was his sister because they wanted to survive. They wanted the food. But the Bible says in chapter number 13, and Abraham came out of Egypt very rich in hearts, in gold, in silver. And even Lot who went with him also came out very rich. So he went with no nothing. He came out with wealth. Do you know what was happening there? There was an, an anointing. Uh, that, that we call uh, the end time with the transfer anointing. When the Lord is judging the evil or the sinners, the Lord is transferring, you know, the economy from the hands of the wicked into the hands of his children. And so Abraham come back very rich. And even Lot who was just by him, he became also very rich. This is what is going to happen to you after today. The Lord is going to give you that anointing. The Lord is going to give you that justice. And it is not only you, but even the people of your family. There is going to be a progression of financial miracles in your family. Oh my God, I feel this. I feel the anointing here. If God is going to give you a job, is going to give your uncle a, a promotion, is going to give your sister marriage, is going to give your mother a new house, is going to give your brother a visa. And so there is going to be financial miracles right in the entire family because when God brings justice, uh, economic justice you remember as even the people that are around you because if God only blesses you all of them are going to be a burden to you <laughs> so what God is going to do is going to bless you and even bless those who are around you so that you enjoy you know it is so disappointing and so tiresome when you are the only person blessed in the family because all the problems of the family will come to you they will call you until you are tired of receiving calls so what God is going to do, because he wants you to enjoy, he's going to bless you, and he's going to bless your uncle, he's going to bless your papa, bless your mama, bless your young sister, bless your elder brother, bless your auntie, bless even your judge. You know, the blessing will be there. You know, there, there is going to be a progression of, of, of blessing, a progression of miracles, a progression of financial testimonies and miracles. Yes, God, when God brings economical justice, he does not only bless you, but even bless the people that are around you. And it is my prayer for you because you've been carrying a very big load. 
You've been a pillar in the family. Everything was looking at you. Everybody was looking at you. You know, you, you've been carrying everything. You've been the breadwinner of the family. But this is what God is going to do as I feel it uh, in my spirit right now. God is going to bring the abundance of the blessing. You shall have what is enough and more than enough. You have what to keep on the account. You have what to give to the needy. You have what to use to help your family members. And you have what you keep in order you make progress financially. There are many people that are watching this program. You've been not making progress financially. God is giving you economical justice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, what happened is that God was uh, exchanging uh, as he gives Abraham justice, is giving the Egyptians judgment. And that is why Abraham was prospering and the Egyptians were becoming poor. The second it happened to Isaac, Isaac goes to the Philistines at Abimelech. He was also running for, uh, for food. He had no food. There was a famine, as I told you, that each time this transfer came, each time this economical justice came, there was a famine. Genesis chapter number 26. Isaac is going to the Philistines to look for food. And the Bible says, and Isaac sowed a seed in that land. And the same year, he got a hundredfold harvest that even the Philistines were envious about him. The Bible says the man became great and he waxed great until he became more great. He, became ex he went beyond, you know, the standard of the first times and if it was uh if there was a gap there were many miles that even the first times cannot uh catch him financially because the bible says god blessed him and that he increased him and the man waxed great and became greater that even the first times were envious about him if nobody is having envy if nobody is jealousy about you, you're not yet blessed. You're not yet anointed until there is somebody who is jealousy about your ministry. You're not yet blessed until there is somebody who is, who is envious about your business or about your position. And so the Bible says, even when they tried to fight for the wells that he reopened, as they tried to fight for them, he opened another one. And they fought and opened another until it came to a place called Rehoboth. That the Lord has expanded us and even our enemies cannot afford to, to fight us. The Lord is about to bless you. That you get to a level that even when they try to steal from you, they cannot finish you. Even when they try to fight with you, to fight for the opportunities, you will have a million opportunities that even if a thousand people are fighting your opportunities, the opportunities will always increase in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are you getting what I'm talking about? There was a strange anointing and there was an activity that was happening in the spiritual realm in that season. That God was judging the Philistines economically and he was giving justice to Isaac. Do you know why? God watered the ground of Isaac. He only watered the ground of Isaac. When other people were crying, Isaac was smiling. And that is what is going to happen to you after today. That when other people will be struggling, you'll be excelling economically. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The third transfer, it happened to Jacob. Jacob runs and he goes to his uncle, Laban. And Jacob is beguiled, is manipulated. He says for 10 years, I was manipulated. And for, for, for 14 years, he worked for the two daughters. And 10 years, he was manipulated by Laban. Gave him no nothing. 
working for free, working and getting no nothing after he took the dollars. And now something significant happens as God brings economic ju justice to Jacob. He goes and sits down with Laban and he said, let us agree. Next year, all the animals that are going to be born with the sports are going to be mine. And those without sports are going to be yours. And Laban said yes. And uh, Jacob got a revelation. He put some things in the water. And as the animal took water and conceived, the following year all the animals were born with the sports. And then Laban changed his mind and said, no, 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 no. Now next year, all the animals that will be born with the sports will be mine. And Jacob went and removed the stuff that he put in the water. <laughs> and then following here, all the animals were born without sports. You cannot bonga, you cannot win somebody who is under economical justice from above. You cannot. Because when you, you change the strategy, God changes the strategy. When you fight him here, God open another door there. When you close this door here, God open another gate there. You close a window, God open a gate. Oh my God, I feel the anointing in here. You close, you, you close a door, God opens a ground. You know, that's what God does when he's bringing economical justice to his children. And this is what I'm feeling right now that it is coming strongly right now that anointing is right in here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The, the fourth, it happened to Joseph. Joseph goes in Egypt as a commodity. He was sold there. But now the commodity became the buyer or the purchase became the purchaser who was sold, started buying. The Bible says he bought all of Egypt. He took their land, he took their uh, animals, he took their food, he took everything until they said, give us food and buy us. He even bought the people. One young man who had a strange anointing, who was moving with the anointing of economical justice. He went into a foreign land. There are many people that are watching us from outside Uganda. I promise you, this anointing is going to hit you. And God is going to bless you in that country. Oh my God. God is going to establish you. You are a child of God. And God is your portion. Everywhere you are, you can prosper and you can succeed. Nobody should intimidate you. You're going to buy a building in that country. You're going to have a company right there. And you're going to be blessed right there. As you enter into the grace that we are operating in right now here in the studio. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. A man who went with nothing, who went as a slave, bought the whole country. There was something significant about Joseph. Number five, it happened to the children of Israel. Uh, Exodus chapter number three, and when you read from verse number 20, you find that the Lord is speaking to the children of Israel, and he says, I'm going to give you favor. And it was an urgent favor, because he told them, you're going to rob Egypt. And you're going to leave them with no nothing. Do you know why? They worked for 30 years building cities for Pharaoh and they were not paid. 30 years working, they built cities and they were not paid. And God said, no, 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 no. My, you can't use my covenant people. They can't work for free. They can't work for free. They must be paid. And God brought economical justice to the children of Israel. The Bible said they took all the gold, they took all the silver, they took all the garments, the precious 
and expensive garments out of Egypt and they came out. You know, they went empty. They went looking for food. They, <laughs> they came out very rich. Are you getting what I'm talking about? It also, it was also done in a time of famine. As I told you, Aria. And the fifth, it happened to uh, a man called Solomon. Solomon. In the days of Solomon, Bible says gold became like a mere stone in the streets. As we move here and see stone is uh, as useless thing, you can even step on it. In the days of Solomon, that is how gold was. It was like a mere stone. In the days of Solomon, people were taking gold from Africa, like the Queen of Sheba. She came from Africa and she had to take bags of gold to Solomon. What was that that was provoking people and compelling people and attracting people to bring the gold? It was upon a Solomon because God had chosen him, you know, to build his temple. And God was going to use the resources and the gold that people are going to bring in order Solomon to build the temple. And so God brought economical justice and he put that oil upon Solomon. And people started to bring gold to him. I pray that this oil rests upon your head in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I feel some special anointing right here. I feel it. Another transfer is going to happen to the church. The end time church and we are the people. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 18 where we just read to 23. God is going to bring economical justice to the end time church. He says in Haggai chapter number 2. Uh, verse number 3. We, we've been talking about that. He says who saw the former glory of this, this church. Is it not as if it is in vain? And he says for a little while. You should not fear. You should not fear Zerubbabel. And you should not fear Joshua. For I'm going to shake the heavens. And shake the earth. And shake the sea. And shake the dry land. And make sure I fill my house with glory. He says, whatever the nation is are looking for, I shall bring in my house. And he says, for the silver and the gold belongs to me. And the latter glory of this church is going to be greater than the former. We are right in the end time. And we are right in the season where by God is shaking the nation, is shaking the ground, is shaking the dry ground, is shaking the heaven, is shaking the seas, is shaking the earth to fill the church with glory. You remember uh, the book of Ephesians, I feel the Bible, Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 25, it begins to say that husband love your wives as Christ loved the church, that he may present it to himself. He present it to himself, a glorious church without a wrinkle or spot. A glorious church. You know, so whatever is needed to make the church glorious, Jesus is going to make it available for the church or for you to be glorious. And so he says, the glory that is going to be revealed in us is greater than the suffering that we are going through right now. And he says all the creation is are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. When the glory of God locates you, then you will manifest. And when you manifest the creations, the wealth, the money, the properties, uh, all the things that the nations are looking for 
will start looking for you. I feel an anointing in here. And about, I'm about to preach it the way I'm feeling led by the Holy Ghost. And I hear God say, you have suffered enough is enough. God is opening the book of remembrance. And God is going to reward you. He's going to reward you in the open. There are some people that have been struggling and, and travailing in pain. There are some people that have been praying. There are some people that have been giving in the secret. There are some people that have been helping others even when they don't have what is enough. But they is told to help others. I hear God say is coming down for your economical justice. It's going to reward you in the open. Your blessing is going to be open. You're going to count your blessing until you get tired of counting in the, the blessing until it will come a countless blessing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I hear a voice telling me that are go they're going to swim in that blessing as they swim in the anointing. They're going to swim in the blessing. Joel chapter number 2 and verse number 28. The Bible says, for it shall come to pass that I shall pour my spirit upon all human beings. So there is going to be the outpouring of the Holy Ghost and there is going to be economical justice as you have the anointing, as you have Jesus Jesus in the heart, you have wisdom in the head, and you have some money in the pocket, and some money in the bank. Are you hearing me, somebody? So the Lord is causing you glorious. You like it or not. This is your season and this is your hour. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. If you have a neighbor there, just slap your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm receiving my financial justice. I know what belongs to me. Good things belongs to me. Nice cars belongs to you. Nice houses belongs to you. Properties belongs to you. Companies belongs to you. They must be yours. Oh my God. Opportunities. Position is properties, lands they're supposed to be yours it is your right, it is your promise, the Lord says I sit in the heavens but I've given the earth to the sons of men to be their inheritance and if you are here and you are not inheriting anything then you are anti-clockwise with the word of God and with the promise of God and that is why I came in here to open your eyes that you may know your right when it comes to economics, when it comes to finances, you got to be rich. You got to be rich. Poverty is not your portion. Poverty is not in the agenda of, of divinity. God, your father is a rich God. And what belongs to your father belongs to you. I curse and I rebuke and I paralyze the spirit of death, the spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I came anointed by the Holy Ghost and I came in the volume of the book and I came to declare in my office as an apostle, I stand in the heavenly domain and I stand as an ambassador and I stand as a terrorist tell your commander and I stand as a territorial spirit to change to shift the things in the spiritual realm and I command Wealth to change hands. I command economical judgment to the wicked. And I command economical justice to the children of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God, as you move today, as you move this month, as you move this year, just understand that the best is what God has for you. 
So it's going to anoint you. It's going to bless you. It's going to give you ideas. It's going to give you understanding. It's going to give you ability. It's going to position you. It's going to give you a promotion. It's going to do whatever he got to do to put you into a place of abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, somebody lift up your hands. I feel and I feel it. And I hear God say, enough is enough. I go to see my children celebrate. I go to see my children happy. I go to see my children excelling. I go to see my children building. I go to see my children traveling, doing international businesses. I go to see the wicked lose. And my children again. Did you know that when a witch drives a Mercedes Benz, that car is crying and is groaning? Did you know that when a witch owns a hotel, that hotel is groaning and crying? Because it was created for the glorious manifestation of the sons of God. Not for the wicked. And so what God is doing right now, even in this season, this coronavirus pandemic was just a shaking. And it is shaking the foundations. And the Lord is transferring wealth. The Lord is shifting wealth from the hands of the wicked to the children of God. I just want you to join me this week because I feel that I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. And things must happen right away. We need an urgent favor in this. It is urgent. It is urgent. It is an emergency. It is an emergency right now. We cannot allow you continue like that. We cannot allow you suffer anymore. No, 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 no. Enough is enough. You must go for your promises. You must go for your rights financially. I want you to have some money. I want you to have some land. I want you to have some house. I want you to open up some companies. I want you to have some business. I want you to be a happy man. Christianity is not a bondage. Who told you that Christianity must suffer? And there is a wicked and diabolic and satanic preaching which says prosperity is not of God. God is a rich God. And God wants his children to prosper. Jesus, the reason why Jesus came, the Bible says he was rich and he left all the richness and he became poor. So that we may become rich. If Jesus did not marry, you must marry. If Jesus did not drive a Mercedes Benz, you must drive it. The latest one. If Jesus did not build a nice house, you got to build it. If Jesus did not fly first class, you got to fly first class. If Jesus only had one kanzu, you must have hundreds of suits, hundreds of garments. If Jesus did not eat in seven-star hotels or five-star hotels, you go to eat in five-star hotels and seven-star hotels. I don't know whether somebody is getting what I'm talking about, but I came with my spiritual anger because I'm tired of seeing you suffering and struggling. I'm tired. Did you know that if you have debts, you become a slave? Did you know that if you are still renting, you are of a foreigner in your own land? Because the owner of the house will wake up in the morning and tell you, vacate my house. And you'll be a foreigner in your own country. Some of you are abusing foreigners. Oh, you don't belong to this country. Oh, they should go to their country. Oh, they, they are foreigners. No, you are a foreigner too. If you're still renting, you are I want you, 
I want to start to challenge you. I want to stir you up. This no sense of the devil must stop. The devil is a liar. I don't know whether somebody is feeling what I'm feeling right now. Rikato prunusia. Ligande le prunu akapruta. Rasakayata. Itolindi pru akalindo taha. Esekatia. Maprotuli kaya. There is an anointing called kurimata anointing. Kurimata. Kurimata is a Greek word which means money, money, money. So there is an anointing called Kurimata anointing, the anointing for money. I'm releasing that anointing right in your hands, right now. I just want you to lift up your hands. That anointing is locating you. That anointing is hitting you right now. I don't care where money is going to come from. I don't care how it is going to happen. But I know that I know that as you receive receive this oil. The oil is going to give you ideas and money is going to locate you. I feel it strongly that you've been paralyzed because you do not have enough finances. You have big dreams. You have a big vision. You have a big ministry. You have anointing. You have a great idea. You have great ideas. You have a great, you have even written a proposal. But you don't have money. To do that, I feel strongly under the apostolic and prophetic anointing that the Lord is giving you financial justice and that oil is coming upon you. The oil that was upon Abraham, the oil that was upon Isaac, the oil that was upon Jacob, the oil that was upon Joseph, the oil that was upon the children of Israel, the oil that was upon Solomon, that oil is coming upon the church. Ah. Oh. Mm. Hey. Hey. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Get onto your phones. There are numbers there. I want you to call right now. Call right now. I feel to pray with somebody. I feel to release this oil upon somebody right now. Call the numbers. Call those numbers right on your screen. And send me a WhatsApp message right now. Send it. The number is there. The WhatsApp number is there. Send a message. I want to pray right away. I want to pray for you right away. I want to pray for you right now. I feel it strongly. There is somebody you've been fighting and you don't know how you're going to get uh, loose from debts. You don't know how you're going to do it. It is beyond your ability. It's, the debts are bigger than your size. The challenge, the financial challenges are bigger than your income. I want you to call. I want to pray with you. The anointing is so great in here. Yokes are breaking financial bewitchment, financial bombardment, diabolic forces that enforces poverty and lack are getting broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I break every curse of poverty, every poverty mindset, every altar, every diabolic force, Every diabolic bird that flies in the air and scatter your finances. I rebuke it. I arrest it. And I burn it with the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every witch. Every financial bewitchment. Every financial altar. That has been setting you back financially. I break the chains. That monitoring... Uh, forces that has been monitoring each time you get a progress, a problem come. Each time you get a breakthrough, a challenge come. Each time you get a promotion, somebody dies. Each time you get money, there is a problem to consume that money. There is a chain that has been following you, enforced by diabolic altars. I break it in the name of Jesus. I want you to call me right now. And I want you to send me a SMS right now. And I want you to like our Facebook page right now. And God is going to bless you. Keep on calling those numbers. When I get out of here, I'm going to pick and I'll be praying. Watch this. Watch this. 
those, screen, those numbers right on your screen, I want you to send your tithe. Those who are uh, the city harvest members, uh, those that are blessed by that, this ministry within the country and outside the country, you want to send your seed, just send right on those numbers. If you don't know how to do it and you are outside the country, there is a WhatsApp number. You just write to me. I will talk to you and give you the directives how to send your tithe, how to send your seed, or how to send your offering. We want you to be part of what God is doing. I just want money attracts money. And I would encourage everybody, I encourage everybody, if you have listened to this uh, message, I want you to get a seed. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to even to tell you how much you got to do. No, 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 no. That is being so cheap. Just get to a level of maturity. Get to a level of maturity and get into your heart and sow a seed. As you sow that seed, you're going to connect with the oil that is operating upon us and you're going to catch the Kurimata anointing and you're going to catch the economical justice and the Lord is going to give you vigilance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I got to come out of here. I got to come out of here. And now what I want you to do is to lift up your hands because I want to bless you. When your hands are lifted up, I bless you. I said, I bless you. I bless your coming in and your going out. I bless your family. I bless your dreams. I bless your business. I bless your office. I bless your plans. I bless your feet. I bless your mind. I bless your children. I bless your account. I bless your ministry. I bless your Monday. I bless your Tuesday. I bless your Wednesday. I bless your Thursday. I bless your uh, Friday. I bless your Saturday. I bless your Sunday. I bless every day in this month. Every day is going to yield increase for you. And you're going to move into financial freedom. I bless Every month of this year, 2020, you shall not write off this year because of what happened at the beginning. God can do it in just a short time. And those who have been down can get up in the mighty name of Jesus because the exchange is taking place in the spiritual realm. And I believe we will end up, as you testify, before the end of this year, you shall be financially free. I want you, just want you to keep on following. Keep on following. Keep on following these mysteries of the kingdom. And your life will never ever be the same. Again, may God bless you. This is your friend, Apostle Dr. Livingston. If this program is blessing you, stand with us. You can even call us just to appreciate us. Just to appreciate us. Those who are in the nation of the world, God extremely bless you. I'm going to see you some other time right here on this great television. God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye. They gave us the word Kairos. That Kairos. Quick word. We are not in for favor. We are not in for favor. Spirit. Spirit. When a principle of God is applied, and whatever you do not expect, you will never experience it. Yes. 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 Number four. Number five. Yes. There are some people that God will never bless. 